right now falling from grace. The church is very much in a crisis. Police swarm the Dallas diocese, new claims of sex abuse against priests. What happens is that church leaders on the defensive. Because I know we are doing what is right. A sex abuse crisis boils over. Live from South Victory, WFAA News at 6 starts now. Good evening, I'm Cynthia Aguirre. And I'm Chris Lawrence. We've seen a reckoning in the Catholic Church, but police rarely step in. That changed today in Dallas. Five priests are under investigation tonight. Officers raided three diocese locations, searching secret archives and digging in a hidden church history. We saw them haul away documents from St. Cecilia Church in Oak Cliff, a Catholic Church warehouse on Ledbetter, and the headquarters of the Dallas Diocese. That's where Jason Whiteley is tonight, and Jason, detectives are accusing the church of stonewalling their investigation. This is something Dallas has never seen. Police executing search warrants this morning at the Catholic Diocese of Dallas, along with two other locations. We're looking for any documentation, any data uh, that uh, uh, would tend to, to, to further the investigation into these allegations of child abuse. Detectives are now pursuing felony investigations against five priests, but police say the diocese has not fully cooperated which led to today's warrant. In January, you probably remember the diocese releasing names of 31 priests that the church said had credible allegations against them of sexually abusing children. Since then, though, Dallas police have asked to see the files on every priest who's ever had a claim. In the 31-page search warrant today, investigators said the Dallas Police Department has not been given even the number of priests' files flagged for sexual abuse. Why? Police say the diocese told them that information was privileged. Go ahead, search. If you really think that there's something more, then look. And if you want to look at it closer, then take it. Bishop Edward Burns was defiant this afternoon, speaking to reporters. Bishop, the search warrant points out and states explicitly that it would like to see every single priest that's ever been flagged, not just the 31, but everybody else. Will the diocese release that information? We're going to cooperate with police department. Why hasn't it already then? Police say they've been asking for that information, but haven't been able to get it. Thank you, because I know that there is um, ongoing conversations with the Dallas Police Department. Police say the Dallas Diocese only released information that benefited the church. Take Father Edmundo Paredes's case and the sexual abuse claims against him. Detectives said the diocese only alerted officers because it would cause media attention and it would look better to say they contacted police. Investigators kept the headquarters of the Dallas Diocese closed all day Wednesday as they searched for evidence. As they begin to build criminal cases against pedophile priests who for too long have enjoyed safe cover from the church itself. And at the six o'clock hour here, Dallas police on scene going on almost 12 hours. Two really big takeaways from today. The first, Dallas police revealing they have opened felony investigations into five priests who are believed to have sexually assaulted children. The other big takeaway, Dallas police saying there and Bishop Burns rejecting the idea that the diocese has not been transparent. What this signals more than anything today, though, is that the scandal and the problem involving Pedophile priests here at the Dallas Diocese will likely get worse before any of it gets better. Back to you guys. It has not let up, Jason, reiterating what Whiteley just said. Five priests are named in today's search warrant. All of them were named by the church earlier this year as having credible accusations of sexual abuse. Here's another look. They are Richard Brown, Jeremy Myers, Alejandro Buitrago, William Hughes, and Edmundo Paredes. Paredes was the longtime pastor at St. Cecilia's Church, and that's where Ariel Placencia is live tonight. Ariel. Yeah, that's right, Izzy. And when news of these allegations first came out, this parish was shocked to hear what was being said about their longtime pastor. And today we learned that it all started right here, that it was this investigation into their former priests that basically set all of today's events into motion. This was the scene at St. Cecilia Catholic Church this morning. Several DPD officers in the parking lot off West Davis Street loading at least one box inside an unmarked SUV. And this is the man at the center of the search, the reason behind all of this. Reverend Edmundo Paredes, the longtime former priest at St. Cecilia. This story starts two years ago when church officials began investigating Paredes after parish funds disappeared. 
He later admitted to financial misconduct and was removed from the church. At least $60,000 were missing. And less than a year later, another bombshell. Claims of sexual abuse were made against Paredes in February 2018. Three men came forward, saying the priest sexually abused them when they were teenagers. But the congregation didn't find out about all this until August. It surprises me. It surprises me. To the best of my knowledge, he was a great man, a holy man, a man of God. Dallas police issued an arrest warrant for Paredes in January, but the 70 year old from the Philippines is nowhere to be found. We are, however, learning new details about him from official documents associated with this morning's search. In August, police learned of a new allegation against Paredes. Referred to as victim number one in the documents, the man was an altar server around 1991 when he first met Paredes. And according to the documents, the former priest sexually abused him from 1994 to 1999. Witnesses said Paredes had juveniles spend the night in his residence, and office staff raised their concerns about this with the now-retired chancellor. So once these accusations against this former priest were made public in August, that's when the diocese announced that they would make a list of possible priests under investigation. So really, when you look at it, this all started as an investigation into theft of money two years ago and now ends today with the list of five Dallas area priests charged with sexual abuse. Chris? Yeah, once you start an investigation, there's no telling where it may lead. Thank you, Ariel. I'm here with Tanya Iser. You've covered the Dallas Police Department for years. Why would detectives decide to sidestep an internal church investigation and raid their offices? It's telling. Uh, they could have chosen to get a subpoena, but they obviously did not do that. And if you read this warrant, it is extremely detailed. It is a, an indication that the church, that the police believe the church was not being cooperative. Yeah, I know you've been digging through that search warrant. I think it was more than 30 pages. Um, police lay out a, a pretty strong case against the church. Yeah, it's a stunning case. They, in one case, they turn over uh, a, a personnel file but then they realize there's 51 pages missing and they have to ask the church for it. They contact investigators in New Mexico and in Montgomery County and they find out that they found a box hidden in a closet. In another case, they had to pick a lock on a vault. And so it's pretty clear that for police to take this step to get this search warrant, that they did not think the church was cooperative and they thought the church was hiding evidence and that's apparently why they did this. Yeah, I think one detective even said uh, the church made it next to impossible to determine if a claim had been made and if so, had it been handled properly. Thank you very much, Tanya. Uh, you know, these kind of raids don't happen all that often, but we have seen it before right here in Texas. In fact, just last year, dozens of state investigators surprised the Archdiocese of Galveston, Houston. They seized records related to one priest accused of sexually abusing two children who attended a church in Conroe. WFAA is covering this story from every angle to make sure you have the information you need. You can find the history and timeline on WFAA.com as well as the very latest developments throughout the night.